Okay, let's do some magnetic fields questions. It's a big topic, so there's 30 questions for this one. The first 10 are good for both GCSE and A-level. One, what is the proper name for magnetic field strength and what are the symbol and unit? It's magnetic flux density. Symbol is capital B, unit is capital T for Tesla. For A-level, the alternative is Weber per meter squared or Newtons per amp per meter. Two, which way do magnetic field lines go? They go from north to south. Three, what is the equation for force on a current carrying wire in a field? It's F bill. Force equals flux density times current times length of the wire. Four, Fleming's left hand rule gives you the direction of the force for the motor effect acting on a wire. What does each finger represent? And I impressed I managed to keep it to five fingers this time. It's freeze, FBI. Thumb is force, first finger is field, second finger is current. Five, what does the field look like for a bar magnet or a solenoid? The field lines come out of the North Pole and go to the South Pole, they loop round. Of course the field lines go inside both as well, don't they? Six, what three things can you do to increase the speed of a motor and similarly for the output of a dynamo? In both cases, we can have more turns in the coil and have a stronger magnet or magnetic field. For a motor, we can have a higher PD, and for a dynamo, we can just turn it faster. Seven, what two things does a step-up transformer do, and why is one needed outside a power station? It increases the voltage, but decreases the current. And we need the current to be reduced before going to the national grid, otherwise too much energy will be lost as heat due to the resistance of the overhead cables. Eight, what is constant for both sides of a transformer, ideally? It's power, and we know power is equal to voltage times current, so V1I1 should equal V2I2 for the primary and secondary coil. Nine, for a step-up transformer, what is different about the secondary coil compared to the primary coil? A-level, explain why this is the case. The number of turns is greater. A level, this is because this increases the flux, the linkage that is captured as it were by the coil. That means that the voltage or EMF is proportional to the number of turns, so V is proportional to N. So we can say the ratio of the voltages is equal to the ratio of the turns. V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. 10, what three parts of a transformer's design ensure as little energy is lost as possible? We have low resistance windings or wire to make the coils. We have a soft iron core, means that it's easily magnetized and demagnetized. And we have a laminated or layered core. And for A-level, you should know that this is because it reduces the eddy currents induced in the core. We don't want any electricity in the core. See you later, GCSEers. We're now just talking A-level. 11, what is the symbol and unit for flux and flux linkage? Flux is phi, and the unit is Weber's, I like to call them wubs. Flux linkage is n phi, number of turns times the flux. So that's Weber turns, or wub turns. 12, what are the equations to calculate flux and flux linkage? Flux is equal to BA, flux density times area of the coil. Flux linkage is just the number of turns times this. So BAN, ban. 13, what will happen to a charged particle that enters a field perpendicular to the field lines? Circular motion. 14, what is the equation for force on a charged particle in a magnetic field, and what does this also equal? It's FBEV, more generally it's F equals BQV, and we know that's applying centripetal force, so that's equal to MV squared over R also. Cancelling out a V, we end up with BQ equals MV over R, and we can do lots with that equation then. 15, what happens if a particle enters a field at an angle to the direction of the field? In other words, not perpendicularly. only a component of the velocity is affected. So that means the particle will spiral along the field line. That's what happens in the ionosphere. 16, what do you have to be careful of when applying the left hand rule to free charges? Your second finger is conventional current. That's the flow of positive charge. So it's fine for positive charges, but you need to flip it for an electron. 17, what is Fleming's right hand rule used for? That's for the dynamo effect. One way of remembering it is generator. 18, which way are these field lines going? They're going into the page, is how we say it. 19, a mass spectrometer needs all ions to have the same velocity. How is this achieved with a velocity selector? We apply an electric and a magnetic field. 
so the ions feel both of these. If they're going too slow, in this case, they'll deflect downwards, and if they're too fast, then they will deflect upwards. So it's only the ones where the electric and magnetic forces are balanced, so it goes straight through. So EQ equals BQV, cancelling that down. The speed is equal to the electric field strength divided by flux density. 20. How does a mass spectrometer work after the velocity selector? We have another magnetic field and ions with a bigger mass are deflected less by it. So that means the radius is larger. We put detectors or film at these specific points and then we can see how many of these ions, relatively speaking, are going to each detector. And this is because from the equation we saw earlier, radius is proportional to the mass. 21. For a cyclotron, why does there need to be an alternating PD applied across the Ds and what is the frequency of this equivalent to? It's to accelerate the protons across the gap, increase the radius. The frequency of this alternating PD is going to be the same as the frequency of the protons going around in their circles. It's not half. And this is independent of how big the circles are for the protons because frequency is independent of the radius. 22. What is Lenz's law? The direction of an induced EMF or current is such that it will oppose the change that caused it. In other words, induced currents will make their own magnetic field that fights back. 23. What will happen if this magnet is dropped through the coil if it's attached to an ammeter? The magnet will fall through the coil at a constant speed. That's because the force due to the induced current's field is balancing the weight. The ammeter will deflect one way and then the other way when the magnet gets halfway. Of course, when it exits, the ammeter will go back to zero. 24. Similarly, what is always needed for a current to be induced in a wire and how is this achieved in a transformer? A wire needs to experience a varying flux or a changing flux. Because everything's stationary in a transformer, this only works if we have AC going into the primary coil. That creates a fluctuating magnetic field. Transformers don't work with DC. 25. What is Faraday's law? Need the equation and the words. Induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change in flux. So epsilon is equal to minus, that minus is just there to satisfy Lenz's law, delta phi by delta t. And then we can times by n the number of turns in a coil to get the actual EMF induced. 26. What is the equation to calculate the EMF induced in a wire moving perpendicular to a magnetic field? It's EMF equals BLV. Note that this also applies to a rectangular coil entering or exiting a field, and we have a constant EMF at those points, but not when the coil is completely inside. 27. The EMF induced in a generator at any time is given by epsilon equals ban omega sine omega t. How do you calculate max EMF from this graph? Max EMF epsilon zero is equal to ban omega. We're just dropping the sine omega t. And we can get omega from two pi divided by the time period from the graph. Similar to SHM, the alternative is to find the maximum gradient. And counterintuitively, that's when flux is equal to zero. One more alternative, we can do BLV, just like earlier. That's because the wire is moving perpendicular to the field at that point. 28. Why are there lots of cables that run through each pylon in the national grid? It's because there are three phases, three separate circuits that originate from the three sets of stators or coils in the power station's generator. 29. How do you find the power lost due to heat and overhead cables from the power and voltage of the station and the resistance of the cables? It's not V squared over R or anything like that because the voltage from the power station is the voltage across the whole of the national grid. So we need to find the current from P equals VI from the station and then we use I squared R to get the power lost. Finally, 30. Why does current decrease in a primary coil if you complete the circuit attached to the secondary coil? If we have a current induced in the secondary coil, this will produce a back EMF that will try and counter the PD in the primary coil, thus reducing the currents in it. And this is similar for motors. If a motor spins fast, then the back EMF is high, which means that the current in the coil is small. 
That's why if you put a heavy load on a motor or stop it from spinning, then the motor will burn out because there's no back EMF to stop the current from going crazy in the coil. So I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you haven't seen my mind map video on this yet, then click on the card and it'll take you there. Bye for now.